Good evening and welcome to the Town of Manio's telephone conference call. Uh, this is Town Manager James Ayers here at Town Hall and other staff members present on the conference call include Town Clerk Becky Reiholtz, Finance Director Sean Quitty, Town Planner Melissa Dickerson, IT Department Head Carl Woody, Fire Marshal Kevin Zork, and Lieutenant Eilert of the Manio Police Department. You'll notice that I identified myself when I started speaking so that the town clerk can capture what I'm saying for the minutes. And it would be great if all participants on this call could do the same. This meeting is available to the public and the public will have the opportunity to provide public comment at the appropriate time on the agenda. Also, the meeting is being recorded so that interested parties can hear the meeting should they be unable to attend. Before the meeting is held over by Mayor Owens, we'll need to ensure a quorum is present. Therefore, we'll need to do a roll call to verify the members of the Board of Commissioners who are present. And I'll start with Mayor Owens. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Selby. Here. Commissioner Walker. Here. Commissioner Collins. Present. Commissioner Borland. I'm here. Commissioner Mann. I'm here. Commissioner Burke. Present. With a quorum present, the Town of Manio Board of Commissioners regular session may be called to order by the mayor. Item number one on the agenda is the call to order. And Mr. Mayor, right. if I may turn it over to you for the call to order. All right, we're going to dispense with a moment of silent meditation for expediency and the pledge of allegiance to the flag. I'm, I'm sure we're all very constitutionally inclined. So uh, we'll call for adoption of the agenda as presented as on the as we have it before us. So how much Commissioner Collins, I uh, approve the agenda as as presented. Is there a second? Commissioner, Commissioner Burke, second. second. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Adoption uh, all in favor say aye. aye. I don't know how we're gonna do this, aye. James, but you will to have to record it, but aye. Yes. Yes thank aye. You. and do we have any nays? Is there any, any nays? Thank you, thank you, Mr. So, so we acknowledge. Was it all eyes? Was it all eyes? Yes. Okay. Uh, we call for adoption. Agenda is presented. We'll have a. We'll ask for the approval of the consent agenda. We'll take all three items and approve them all or disapprove them all at one time. All in favor of the consent agenda, say aye. 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 Opposed? I can't say no why, so I have it. <laughs> thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And and what we may do, and what we may do oh, forgive me. Go ahead, James. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And if we get items where we need to do a roll call vote, we'll do that. Um, next up on the agenda, item five is. I'm sorry, yep, item five or presentation. Some of these items are for information, some for action. So we'll do a roll call vote for the ones that require action if it's if it's all right with you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay, item number five A, this, this is a proclamation on Child Abuse Prevention Month. Uh, it doesn't require board action. Uh, it requires a signature of the mayor and what were the resolution, um, all of these documents are all up for the public. All these documents are attached to the agenda package which is available to the town website. So we've certainly asked members of the public or the press or other interested parties to do it. But the, the focus of the, the proclamation is that April is Child Abuse Prevention Month and call upon all citizens, community agencies, faith groups, medical facilities, elected leaders and businesses to increase their participation in efforts to support families, thereby preventing child abuse and strengthening communities in which we live. This, this item doesn't require action by the board, but it would require for the mayor to become effective. Um, so Ms. we'll leave that, we will have that in the package available for the mayor to sign should he choose to do so. Item number 5B on the agenda. This is, also, this is an item for information only. I would point people to the agenda package. I know that this is the feedback that was requested on the town's recycling program and the curbside recycling bay disposal. This is for information. Um, as I would, I know the board does not need me to read into the record uh, several pages of comments. I will say that the staff report that uh, when we cut off the, the feedback, we had six comments. Um, 
and and the the exact wording there is shown in the agenda package that the that the, the board has and is available on our thing. Following that deadline, there was a, a seventh feedback uh, feedback that was submitted, and where they believe that um, we recycle everything possible, and the convenient recycle service has only increased our efforts. And they're also on board with the wheelabrator in terms of recycling and consideration and for promoting any kind of U.S. company that would be a win. The feedback is there. We will, this action doesn't require, this doesn't require an action by the board. We did tell the board we expected a meeting with the state on the 30th. That meeting was canceled due to the corona, coronavirus situation. However, we have received word from the state in the last 48 hours that they are, uh, they're trying to establish a material recovery facility up in Pampa County and currently have one set up in Portsmouth for this vendor or others to use. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll take the feedback and provide some options to the board, unless you'd like to pro provide some guidance to, to staff now, you can hold this over to the main meeting for your consideration. How's the board feel about it? I'm all right with what James presented. This is Richie. I, I agree with Bobby. Just hold it off until the next month. Until we can oh, yeah, that's more. what I want to do anyhow. Yeah. I agree with you. Okay. 10 All right. How's the board feel about it? Put it on the next agenda? Yes, sir. Yeah. I agree okay. about it. All right. That's what we'll do, James. Do it. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, next up, 5C. This is an update on the coronavirus COVID-19 response, and it's in several sections. Section one is town operations. I simply want to reassure the, com the community that are listening or re hearing reported that all essential services are continuing, including sewer and water, law enforcement, sanitation, permits and inspections, and more. Access to town hall and the police department is limited to urgent matters, and visitors will have to ring the doorbell and use the intercom prior to entry. Parks remain open, but public restrooms and playgrounds are closed. Museums, including the P. Island Cookhouse Museum, the Maritime Museum, and the interior of the Roanoke Marshes Lighthouse remain closed. Additional updates are shown on the Town of Manio website, plus we continue to place this information on the Dare County website at darenc.com. Next up, item, this is item 5C2. This is for action. It's approval of resolution 2020-02 for remote participation. All right, all in favor of approval of resolution, say aye. 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 All right, is it unanimous, James? Can, can uh, all against, all opposed. <laughs> the ayes seem to have it. We'll move hey, on, James. Hey, who made the motion? I, I'll make the motion, Dale. I'll make the motion. This is Okay, Dale. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right, there's a I'll second. I'll make the motion. Who seconded it? it? Orland, this is Richie. I'll second it. Okay. Okay. There's a second. All opposed. All in favor of the most resolution for remote participation. We've already voted, so hell, it ain't no use to vote again. Move on, James. Yes, sir. Item number 5C3. This is HR policy updates, including setting up a town manager sick leave fund. This is, it is for action, and I'm requesting approval of the policy changes so that we can do a larger sick leave fund including manager and others can donate so staff can have sick leave, especially in these emergency situations. All right. Uh, I guess we need a motion on that one, Noah James. Yes, sir. Yes, I got a question. Can I, I do have a question. This is Commissioner Selby. Go so ahead, Betty. The sick, okay, the sick leave will open it up for all staff and the manager? Um, well, the, the sick leave is for all staff. As manager, I'm proposing to donate uh, donate to the, to, the, to the fund and any other staff who want to donate to it may do so as well. I wanted to make the ability to donate more than the 40 hour restriction that's there because if we get into a situation where someone has to quarantine for two weeks, I want to, we want to give them help. Oh, they'll get it. Yeah, but I want to make sure that it's not just a time manager that can donate, but other staff as well. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mayor Pro Tem. Yes, uh, in the um, uh, we're proposing that not just a town manager, but other staff can donate sick leave as well, and they would also under this action they wouldn't be re they wouldn't be restricted to the 40 hour policy right now. So any any town employee could donate under this. Yes. Okay. Betty, you all right with that? 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, okay. Yes, I'm good. All right. Yeah, thank you. All right. Uh, do we need a motion, James? You said. Yes, sir. If we could have a mm -hmm. motion and second and a vote, right. that would be great. Who motion? Portland will move to approve the HR policy updates as proposed. All right. Is that Jay? That's Jason, isn't it? That's Jason. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is there a second? Eddie Mann will second it. Okay, Betty. Oh, Eddie. All right. <laughs> all right. Uh, all opposed. All in favor. All in favor. Say aye. All right. All opposed. The ayes have it. Motion carries. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Next up on the agenda, options for relief on utility billing. This is for action. The board already took a uh, swift action at its last meeting to ensure tap water, current public health, uh, allowing the suspension of disconnection utilities. And it, um, we also, though, we're look, we, the state statutes would also allow us to provide additional relief, um, including the waiver of penalties, late fees, et cetera. And I'm all, we're also as allowing to, for payment plans should someone find themselves on the wrong side of the situation and need some time to pay their bills. Um, we uh, also are proposing uh, convenience, uh, can help helping out with those convenience fees because we want people to pay online instead of just showing up at town hall, but they're right now paying fees from 250 to 375. And I'm also proposing that we waive those fees to the customers and have the town pay them directly through the, the customer, the credit card uh, servicing company. All right, now that requires a motion, right? I know yes, it does. Yes, Mr. Mayor. All right, uh, you've heard uh, uh, the town manager speak of relief on the utility bill, and uh, is there any discussion? Anybody? All in favor? I have a motion. I mean, I, hell, I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm sorry. I'm not used to this. This is awkward as hell for me. Uh, <laughs> all right, Dale made the motion. Who's the second? This is Richie, I'll second. Okay, Richie. Uh, motion by Darrell, seconded by Richie. We approve the relief of utility building presented by the manager. All in favor? Uh, uh, aye. Aye. Hey, I've got a question. This is Darrell. Yeah, Darrell. This is for the time manager. Hey, I had, I've had some citizens asked about uh, cutting the water bill in half for the next uh, billing cycle. Is that possible, uh, Town Manager? Yes, uh, Commissioner Collins, we, we actually verified that the statutes do not allow us to cut the base rate or the charge for the water uh, under this under this utility fund. It's not allowed per the statute, but we uh, the statute does give us the dispensation for what we did, what was just done by the board, which is to waive late fees, uh, interest penalties, and allow a payment plan. Okay, thanks. Okay, does that satisfy you, Daryl? Yeah. Okay. Oh well, I want to clear that one up too. Did you? Uh, does it mean that we, that you, at your discretion or time's discretion, we can cut the bills in half, James? No, uh, no, no, Mr. Mayor. We, we, we absolutely can't do the. We cannot cut okay. or the base the base water fee. All we can cut are uh, uh, fees and penalties. In the future, right, Daryl, you understood that. I want to make it clear <laughs> for you. I understand what it's Okay, Daryl. All right. Did we just vote on that? We did, didn't we? Yes, yes, sir. That, yeah. was, a, that was a unanimous vote following the motion in a second. Thank yeah. you, sir. Go ahead. Okay, next up is the, that section five is manuallife.org support site. This is for information. I'll shorten the, the presentation. The, I, just, I, want to, I want to shout out the book. We wanted to support residents, businesses, and nonprofits during this time. And there's some things that happen on the local level that are things like grassroots efforts, um, uh, food, food deliveries, um, meals of the homebound, et cetera. I mean, the community's really coming together to help each other out. But we had, we, in order to promote those types of activities, we were obliged to do a new website. So uh, a shout out to uh, Michelle Bunce and Carl Woody, who stood up a website in seven days, uh, including a new website, a logo, and content. And we've got spotlights. You've got spotlight out there. Um, it's on the website, manualife.org, Facebook, and Instagram. And most importantly, we've already received reports that our early spotlight stories about local businesses and nonprofits is already generating contributions right here in the community. So we simply ask people to share their ideas and their stories. They can either email info at manualife.org 
or just call us right here at Town Hall at 473-2133. And that, that's, the, that's the shortened report, Mr. Mayor. All right, what are you asking us to do with that? I'm, I'm simply meeting with the people on the phone, the press, and uh, the, those, those who, I just wanna make sure that the community understood that, uh, that the town is working hard to support them. And I want oh, people okay. to get ideas that they share, they share it with us and we can get the word out. Uh, all right. That don't take more action then, does it? No, sir. But the next item would okay. require action. That's the Manio Small Business Emergency Fund. In, in this case, the board is, is not necessarily being asked to take an action to create the fund. Um, this, this, there are uh, basically um, a, a small business emergency fund um, would help small and disadvantaged enterprises here in the town of Manio. North Carolina local governments are authorized to do these types of economic development activities to help preserve the businesses in town and get them through, especially in the term between now and the time uh, federal and uh, federal and state funding is available. Now, the, the we would have to talk to the board about establishing for such a fund, making an appropriation, but oh, what the first thing that has to happen is that the board would have to set a public hearing on April 15th in order to even consider this. And between now and then, staff can provide uh, guidance and options to the board for the consideration at that meeting. This is Commissioner Walker. Um, James, how how will that work? Um, as far as I mean, they're submitting submitting um, applications for help through the town. Yeah, yes, Commissioner Walker. Uh, the, the different areas can set it up differently, like through a community foundation, or they can do it directly. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a cog, uh, nor is our community foundation set up for these types of business loans. So we would have we would have to do that here locally, which would include loan app, short form loan applications, underwriting, uh, and working individually with 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 the clients. Um, so, but we would make sure that we would bring to you the information, not only how we would administer it, but also parameters like what's the maximum loan amount and are the borrowers are only small businesses. And of course, they are only businesses located here with their physical, you know, their physical presence here in the town of Manio. So those types of parameters we would, we would bring to the board for their consideration. And we want to make sure should this, should something like this proceed, we want to make sure it's targeting those businesses that are providing jobs right here in town. Okay, thank you, James. This is Richie. Is this going to be like a loan for the small businesses or a grant? Yes, 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 Commissioner Burke. That's a great distinction. Under the state statute, we cannot make a direct grant to a business. That's that's uh, that's considered giving them that's that's giving them. They call it an emolument, but we can't give them a direct grant. We also can't give them a zero interest loan because then that's competing with lenders. We we, we would have to do a rate, but we have. A lot of leeway in terms of having a period where there's a no payment for the, say the first six to twelve months, and then interest only for six to twelve months, and then a loan payback period, so that we can get them through the crisis now, get them access to that federal and state funding, but bridge these next next couple months of hardship. But it's definitely a loan, not a grant. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. This is Commissioner Selby. Um, I just got a couple questions. Have we had, uh, not identifying any small business, but have we had any requests for this type of loan? Um, uh, Tom Selby, at this time, we haven't had an individual business say, can you give me a loan? But what I have anecdotally, as I've been going out and visiting with businesses, um, sometimes <laughs> through the door, uh, sometimes watching them close up, you know, close up uh, in light of the executive order. Um, that they are they are hurting and they're worried about whether they can make next month's rent payment or uh, fix costs and things like that. Um, we we um, we I, I think it's going to be particularly helpful. One of the things we talked about that manualife.org website in the last agenda item. We have been reaching out to businesses and trying to get a handle on what are the what are the things they need from us as a town. And I, and this particular one has come up more than once, and there are other jurisdictions uh, that are doing it. In fact, as recently as a couple hours ago, we were on the phone with um, uh, with the the uh, school of government and Buncombe County 
city of Asheville officials that were that were doing this already. Okay. Well, um, no, I, I, I got I got to get in here. I, I I don't know if I'm for it or against it. I don't know. I'm wide open, but it seems to me like we're probably going to be opening a Pandora's box. Who is going to apply? And how's go, who's going to signify what business is qualified for and not? There's a lot of questions here, but uh, maybe you can help me out, James. Absolutely, Mr. Wren. That's good, that's the great thing. Good point, Bobby. We're not we're not ask we're not asking uh, the, in this particular case should should the board believe that this kind of economic development initiative is not something that we right now totally understand, but as we as we flesh out the program and get the information back to the board, the, 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 the thing we're at that's being asked for now is if the board even wants to entertain it, the recommendation was simply to hold a public hearing on April 15th uh, because the, the state law well, when we give a notice, a 10 day notice period um, before you can even take an action. And if at a public hearing, then it just- Maybe, maybe, possible. maybe we'll be a through some of this mess by the 15th. Why don't we just table this until the 15th? Well, I think, the, I think the request is to have a public hearing at it. And this is- well, a, That'd be all uh, right. This is uh, Jason Borland. I, you know, I, I feel strongly about this, having a, having a business in town, but uh, I want to get that out there because I, I don't think it's appropriate for me to um, vote on it. Um, even though I will speak on it a little bit. I, I think it's, I'm proud of, of what we're doing, James, uh, between the, the new website, you know, commend you guys for getting that launched so quickly and, and the thought of this, um, you know, while it needs to be figured out who would qualify and how it would work and we need to make sure that we're um, in sync with things like the SBA loans that are out there so we're not, you know, making sure oh. people don't qualify for those because we've given them money or, or, or anything like that. Uh, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm proud that we're, uh, we're doing what we can to uh, start to mold the ball of clay of how we can help our commercial and uh, residential, um, you know, um, people in town here. This is uh, Commissioner yeah, Shelby again. This is Commissioner Collins. I would like to see what James comes up with. Uh, as far as the ideas and criteria, and I think we ought to do all we can to uh, support the small businesses in the town of Mania, because this, can, this might be a devastating event for not only Mania, but the whole country. Yeah. Well, I, I totally agree with what Jason said and what you all said, you said too, uh, Dale, and I'm not against it. Please understand that. I think it's an admirable even thought to think about an idea like this on James's part, but you know, I still say we're opening a Pandora's box because we're commissioners and if one says they can have it and then the other one says, I'm a small business, why can't I have it? We turn him down. We're opening up a lot of things here and we haven't even seen the budget yet. Right. Right, that's my uh, question. I don't, I don't know what's right and what's wrong. I, I'm, I'm all for uh, supporting James and bringing it up to 15th for public hearing or anything like that, but I'm not for, I don't think it should be, I don't know, this that, that this is heavy when you stop and think about the complications and the involvement. Well, this is Commissioner Selby again, and what I was, was saying is the same thing, like the mayor said, I, I like to see where it's coming in the budget, what line item is it coming out of fund balance, um, I think we need those details. And um, Mayor, uh, I mean, James, you said economic relief. We want to give those small business economic relief. Uh, the word on that was economic relief that you use. And we certainly want to give them that economic relief. But we need more details. This is like take a, take a loan. Where are we taking the loan from? Are we reducing the line item in the budget? Are we increasing the line item in the budget? We need to know that, and then we need to coordinate with what the states get ready to come out, because I think the state is coming out with some loan for small businesses that, as well. So we need to make sure we're not going to hurt the small business um, in anything that they may apply from from the state, or even up top from the federal government. So yes, we want to help them. Small businesses is important. They got to feed their families just like we do. They got to pay their employees, utility bills, and all that. So we want to support it, but we want to make sure we 
supported with the right details and coordinated with anything else. I guess the question, uh, James, is is at the public hearing, what is what is presented? You know, because it, it's obviously um, the intent is there, and it's all in the execution, whether it's something that we could or should do. Um, so, what would the what's the messaging for the public hearing? What's the what are we asking the public to uh, to tell us? <laughs> Just, uh, yes, do they want sure. loans? No other information, or how can you yes. elaborate on that? Absolutely, Commissioner Borland. So between now and the time that, that we the agenda would be released, the agenda package would be released in anticipation of the public hearing, there would be fleshed out examples of what parameters you want, with loan amounts, repayment periods, how we're already coordinating with the state and federal funding streams. All those things we fleshed out as a sample package or framework. So both the board and the public would have something to react to. I suspect though that the there there may be two two areas of feedback from from the public one would be fiscal issues because this is the use of taxpayer money presumably taken from fund balance um, so there's the fiscal issue the other part then is the actual what will it do for small businesses and the jobs here uh, that economic development and the small business relief angle so those may be two primary areas but we want to make sure we put enough information out there in advance of the hearing so people can react to it and the only reason I was suggesting the public hearing is because uh, that, that, that gives us the, we cannot even, we cannot even start the fund until that public hearing has been held. So uh, without, without the public hearing, we're kind of dead in the water. This is Eddie Mann. Um, I'm okay with the public hearing. I just, my question would be uh, for you, James, if by the 15th, you could get us some kind of sample of how much total from the fund you're looking at uh, using, um, what kind of criteria we're gonna have for payment schedules or um, proposed interest rates, proposed qualifications for a loan, um, things of that nature. That way I can just get a better total grasp of um, everything when we have public comment. Yes, sir. This is Commissioner Shelby again. Okay, I go back to what Commissioner Collins said that some people were asking could they have some kind of relief too for their utility bill. So uh, is there anything in the budget? Because we're talking about economic relief, which people definitely need. But then again, Commissioner Collins said that it sounds like he said something similar to residential relief too. People who have a hardship with paying their utility bill. So if we can, you know, Mayor, look into that as well. Yes. All right, yes. So, I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, James. I'm sorry. Uh, I was just, uh, uh, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, you bring up a great point. And um, what I can do is, just like Manual Life, are trying to help residents and businesses. These are two separate issues, but we absolutely could have both up on the, on the April 15th agenda. And let me, so on the business side, the statute allow us to do some, these emergency loans as part of economic development. On the resident side, for example, being able to, on the, uh, let's take the water bill, for example, that Commissioner Collins brought up. Although the state statutes don't allow the utility fund to waive a bill or cut it in half, um, the state statute does not prohibit us from using general fund money, perhaps out of balance, but general fund money to, to set up uh, some kind of relief for, for residents here in town. Um, so that, that particular thing wouldn't require a public hearing, but I think your, your point's well taken that if we wanna talk about relief, we could at the same meeting talk about relief for businesses out of economic development and then relief for, uh, uh, for individual residents out of the general fund. Those, so that would, the, the residential one would be grants, whereas the businesses would be loans. So if it's the will of the board. Yeah, just for Commissioner Collins, that, that sounds good to me, James. Uh, so can we go ahead and, and set the public hearing for uh, April 15th, 2020 at five o'clock? Yeah, I, I don't know why not. Is the board objectionable to that or would they approve of it? I'll second it. This is Richie. 
All right. Is that a motion or a suggestion, Darrell? It's a motion. All right. A motion by Darrell, seconded by uh, Richie, that we present your motion. I don't even know what you said. I really don't. <laughs> Uh, well, well, come set in, a, come uh, in up a hearing for uh, uh, April 15, 2020 at 5 p.m. on the Small Business uh, uh, Emergency Fund as well as uh, uh, citizens' uh, input on yeah. their funds, to, trying to fund them to or grants. Right. Like, uh, uh, under discussion, now we don't even know what the people are going to say when we bring it up to a public comment period. They well, could be for, they could be against. Answer. Yeah, we need well, more we info. Yeah, we do. Before before the fifteenth, we need to get you know, like Commissioner said, man said, we need to get some information on it so we won't be in the blind. Yeah, I agree. Uh, James going to do that. Okay, James going to do that, right? Okay. James. Yes, sir. And that, so <laughs> yes, now, now I'll ask you. Oh, sorry. Yeah, this is Darryl? Commissioner Collins. You going you going to uh, provide us with that information before the fifteenth? Yes, and it, the information will be on now. Now that I'm hearing the, mo the motion is is both for the small business emergency fund as well as a citizen relief grant or fund, and so I'll have information on potential programs, uh, funding sources, and parameters. All right now we're not mo we're we're just setting up the, the discussion for the emergency fund. Isn't that right? Yeah, just a yes. public hearing. That's what I thought. We're not passing no emergency fund now. No. Nah. Okay, I'm off. Yeah, okay. Uh, Y'all have heard the motion. Uh, all in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? I seem to have it. The motion carries. All right, James. It's now time for public comment period. Go ahead, James. Take over. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So we are on a conference call, so we can't see people coming up to the podium. But I can tell you by looking at the computer screen that we have we have ten attendees that are out there right now. Of those ten attendees dialing in, if any of those folks would like to make a public comment, um, we'll have you hit star nine on your phone. And what we'll do is we will uh, we will unmute your phone so you can make your public comment. Um, as after we hit after you hit star nine, you hit your hand raise, and I'll identify you by the last four numbers on your on your phone number. Now, go ahead and read the public comment requirements that are just like we would at a normal meeting. Members of the public are invited to address the board issues on any topic. Public comment is not intended to require the board to answer any impromptu questions or to take any action on items brought up during the public comment period. Speakers will address all the comments to the board as a whole and not one individual commissioner. Discussions between speakers and members of the audience will not be allowed. Time limits are three minutes per person or five minutes per group. <laughs> Please come forward and identify yourself so your statements can be recorded. So I am looking up, I am looking up at the list of 10 phone call listeners. What I have in front of me are 10 phone numbers but I do not have anybody who's raised their hand. So repeat the instructions to raise your hand. Um, on your phone, your phone keypad, if you hit star nine, it will raise your hand and we will call, we'll call you out for your, chance to, uh, for your chance to make your public comment. Let's see, we uh, still don't have anybody raising their hand for public comment. All right, let's wait a minute. Ask him one more time, James. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the third call for public comment. If somebody would like to make a public comment, hit star nine on your phone. Your hand will be raised, and I will identify you. I'll identify your number. Do Mr. you have Mayor, a number? No, sir. Nobody's raised their hand. All right. We'll now declare the public comment period closed. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Next item on the James. agenda. Yes, sir. James. Yes, sir. Uh, I've been thinking about this next item, and uh, it's going to be up to the board, but it's under new business discussion, traffic measures for Swalter Raleigh Street. You know, we would be awfully unfair to have this meeting on, on uh, teleconference because there's so many people involved that want to be heard, and some of them don't even know how to get on a teleconferencing call. 
and that some of them might even not have phones. I don't know. And so I think we need to table this till the next public meeting that we can all be together, hopefully April the 15th. This is Commissioner, this is Commissioner Walker. I, I don't think we're going to be together by April 15th. I think well, if we're not, we'll table it till May the 1st or whenever. But, but we have to we 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 have to get used to doing something without physically being present. This might be a new normal for a while. All right, you know? okay. We'll we'll take your suggestion. Are you suggesting we go on with the uh, discussion and new business? I I think the discussion is worthwhile. Yes. All right. Go ahead, James. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So agenda item 7A, discussion of traffic and traffic calming measures on Sir Walter Raleigh Street, West of 64. This is for information. At the board meeting last month, there were multiple concerns expressed about traffic problems on Sir Walter Raleigh Street, West of Highway 64, along with concerns regarding the traffic control measures installed a decade ago. Within 12 hours of those public comments, the Manual Police Department had deployed its speed trailer on Sir Walter Raleigh, which displays speed to motorists and collects data on vehicle speed. Also, the MPD deployed officers to this location, especially during the time period identified by the public. And we have with us today, Lieutenant Eilert, to share with us information that he has gathered on this, on this topic. I have now gone and unmuted uh, Lieutenant Eilert from the conference call with us. Good evening, everybody. It's Lieutenant Eilert here with, with the police department. Hello. How you doing, Lieutenant? I've got this request from uh, time mayors about uh, deploying the radar trailer and the, and the concerns of the traffic over the Raleigh west of Highway 60. I'm going to give you all some statistics uh, that was collected by the radar trailer and some enforcement actions taken by the police department. Uh, we deployed uh, this radar trailer and, and officers within 12 hours of this request and the data collected from the radar trailer identified 13,495 total vehicles that came through this radar trailer. 85% uh, of those vehicles were traveling 24 miles per hour or less, which is approximately 10,350 vehicles. 122 vehicles were identified as being 10 miles an hour plus or over the speed limit, uh, which is less than 1% of the, of the uh, data that was collected. Uh, most of those 10 plus mile per hour offenses were between 7 and 9 in the morning and 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. mostly on weekdays. Uh, the enforcement actions taken by the police department, we had uh, six speeding citations that were issued, 15 uh, left of center enforcement actions, three no operator's license and one expired registration and one inspection violation. And that's all the data that I have from the uh, the radar trailer and the enforcement actions taken from uh, the fifth until today's current date. Thank you, thank you, Lieutenant. Now, uh, with regard to the second half of this issue, uh, the traffic calming measures, um, I have been in contact with the DOT. We had discussions uh, regarding this topic. Although is our it's my understanding that the DOT does not allow speed bumps, speed humps, or speed tables on their roadways. And several years ago, this the measures that were taken were intended to calm traffic and, and slow it down. Uh, they the they're called alternately bump outs, bulb outs, or curb extensions, and they're designed to be in the roadway so that people are feel less comfortable driving past them, and they're intended to slow down. Um, also, they serve a secondary purpose in that they also, in this case, on Sir Walter Raleigh, they help to define the, the parking zones that are on the south side of Sir Walter Raleigh. On the north side of Sir Walter Raleigh, that's a no parking zone because there's only a travel lane, not a, uh, uh, not a parking area. Um, so the DOT, even though I think they were a little surprised that we would consider now taking out what we so recently paid to put in, uh, they did say they, they, they would look at our, if we requested removal of them, they would certainly uh, consider that and if we paid for it, that would be a consideration. Um, I also talked about a potential crosswalk there, uh, right across to the playground. Typically they do not do what they call a mid-block crosswalk. They like them at the ends of blocks, 
but we were taking some measurements and they said they would consider that if that's something we want to do. Um, one last thing uh, in terms of requests that came in was we did have a request that came in by letter, not by public comment from the church, asking us to remove the no parking signs in front of the church in case they had um, uh, funeral processions or parking during church services. Unfortunately, that's a travel lane. There's no parking lane there. So I'm not comfortable removing those no parking signs because that would require oncoming motorists to go all on the left of center, which is something we were trying to prevent. And uh, I did talk to the Manual Police Department, though, if there's like, if there's not enough room in their parking lot and on Haven Creek Lane to accommodate, say, a funeral procession or things like that, uh, we will simply allow, they'll simply allow coordination with the Manual Police Department to make sure we've, we've got uh, some support there for a funeral procession or such a thing like that. So we're happy to accommodate in those special cases, but as to full removal of the parking signs, at this time. And that's our report. Uh, uh, this is Commissioner Selby. The people have spoken. They want the ball bots removed. Um, I know they paid, you said the town of Manny were paid to put them in a couple years ago. Um, so I would like more investigation for them to be removed. As I said, the people, the town of Manny of people on the west side have spoken and they made the request that they be moved. Um, I don't know about the past, but well, this is Richie. Oh this is Richie. This is Commissioner Collins. Only a few people on the town of Manny is requested the removal of those bubbots. And for me, the bubbots would, would protect the kid. If a kid steps in the street where the bubbot is, a car can't hit him. But if you take the bubbot out and a kid steps in the street, a car could hit 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 the kid. Uh, no. Also. Uh, <laughs> You can't see past that blah blah. That's what they were saying at the public hearing that kids run out, they can't see the traffic. And uh, James Ayers, who said they'll go left of center, if you missed uh, Laverna Brooks, said that that's what the problem was cars going over to the left of center. So she said that in her public comments. So, this is Richie. Well, this back when we did, back we did this. In the, in the public Richie, comment. Richie, go ahead. Richie, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby. Back when we did this, we had multiple meetings with the public and nobody opposed this issue. Nobody came out and said, the, voiced the opinion that they were against this. So the town of Maniac, per public interest, went ahead and did this with no objections whatsoever on this matter until now. And I don't That's understand fine. why this is coming up now. Well, this is uh, Commissioner up now. Borland. <laughs> Uh, so Betty, go not, ahead. I mean, we, we have a couple of different things here. You know, it, it's tough to say, um, you know, we have a, a, a bump out problem and we have a speeding problem and the bump outs are a, a traffic calming device and their purpose is primarily to slow people down. Um, and so we're saying we want to slow people down or going too fast, but we don't like the bump outs. Um, so I'm, my, my initial reaction is that the bump out should stay, but at the same time, we've, we've, uh, dropped the ball on, um, you know, now they're just ugly pits, uh, and right. they don't need to be view obstructing big trees in there, but they should be something that looks nice. Uh, and that's something that goes in line with, you know, the 20 year plan and how that side of the road is supposed to look like this side of the road. Uh, and, uh, and, and one flow of, of town and uh, it, it needs the care and attention. I know it's probably um, Department of Transportation uh, property, but it seems like, you know, we've got conflicting ideologies there when we, um, so I, I don't know. That's just uh, my, my, my initial reaction is that the bigger problem is the, the speeding. And I, I I know it's less than one percent, but it only takes one car. And I do appreciate the uh, the police and James. I went down there the next day. I know uh, um, a few of us did, and uh, I saw that thing out there, and I saw somebody pulled over, and um, I was like, "Dang, man, we got out there quick." But so that's why this I, is Richie. You know, I, I this is that. Richie. I I agree with Jason. I think it needs to be better planted, you know, with you know some some flowers or some, some low shrubs if that would matter, and you know, and get probably maintained. But I, I okay. don't think we need to take them out. Just maintain them. I think they need to be. This commission Selby, the people asked that it would be taken out. And um, I think that'd be 
consider. And to you, Commissioner Borland, it's always conflicted when it comes to the West Side. Uh, this is Commissioner Collins. In the public, in, when when the public commented on the bobites in our last meeting, they stated that there were trees in the in the bobites. There are no trees in that in the bobites. Oh, now. there was there was trees there at that one was, time. Yeah. Daryl, there, yeah, there, there were trees. One there were trees there at one time. Okay, well, I'm saying right now. Can I speak? Yeah. They, they we took the trees out. And we oh, you said they weren't there. Stuff. You said they weren't there. They were there, but we took them out. Okay. All right. I misunderstood you. They are out now, and we have, we have low flowering uh, Indian hawthorns now, and it's well maintained. So it, it, it's no obstruction for kids to climb across the street or anything like that anymore. That's why we took the trees out. Everything is, is beautiful there now, you can, and you can ride in there and look at it now. It's well maintained, landscaped, and it, it looks All good. All right, is, is there any other discussion on this matter? Anybody else? Because we opened it for discussion as the uh, request of Christine, and we're not going to vote on it tonight anyhow. So, is there any other discussion? I, I think just the, only other, the only other can point I? to make is it, it's okay if. You know, it's like I said. There's conflicting ideologies <laughs> there on on the bump out, um, and it's okay if the people didn't or didn't oppose them and wanted them before, and now that they've been there for however long, don't want them anymore. Um, so it's not to say that that's definitely how it should be. You know, people can we we change our minds all the time once we we get into something. So. Um, that's fine. I just think, you know, they do, they are there for a purpose, which is traffic common and slowing people down and, and safety. Um, so if, if we want that, then we should keep that in mind uh, in the conversation, whether to remove them or not. All right. Is anyone else? This uh, is this Commissioner. Is, man, I'm, 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 I'm going to do whatever the, I, I want to do whatever the majority of people want, they want them there or not. That's the, that's up to the public. I'd like to have more discussion on it. Hopefully, we'll have a meeting where we can uh, see people. Well, I, face -face we're not going. We're, we're just discussing, Eddie. We're just discussing at night, and you're absolutely right. That's why I said uh, in the open meeting, and Christine didn't want to do it. I wanted to hear from the people more that could come to the meeting and voice it personally. This so, is Commissioner uh, Walker. Um, I do hope in the future that we are able to meet in person and have more public input about it. Um, I know that the ball bouts are an approved method to slow traffic, you know, based on DOT's recommendations. So I just am hesitant to remove those. Um, that's just my feeling right now. And I, I agree with Daryl. They look so much better now that the trees were removed. Um, but the Indian hawthorn, um, you know, should provide, um, you know, some protection. And it, you know, everyone just needs to um, take responsibility. And, and, you know, we don't, we probably, I mean, a crosswalk would be great if DOT deems it safe, and that's what we need to rely on is DOT and the police department um, and their recommendations. All right, any other discussion? We're gonna bring it up at a later date. All right, James scheduled for uh, at your convenience, see, April, April the 15th or whatever the May meeting is again. We're going to bring it yep. up again. Thank Move you. on, James. Yes, Move sir. on, James. Item number 7B is discussion of a recommendation from the planning board in scheduling a public hearing for the town of Manual flood damage prevention ordinance and maps. This is a short agenda item in that the board is not expected to weigh in right now on the ordinance. But what we need to do in order to remain in compliance with the state deadlines is that uh, we recommend that the board should set a public hearing for the May 6, 2020 meeting on this topic. And we would respectfully request uh, that the board set that hearing. 
All right. Uh, are you prepared to set the hearing? Have you guys set, James? Y yes, sir. We're, we're prepared to do the notice requirements should the board authorize authorize the hearing on May 6, 2020. All right. We got to have a motion, right? Yes, sir. All right. You all have heard the motion from James. Uh, all in favor? We need James to take the motion. Who? Uh, this James can't Brown make a motion. motion. I, okay. I, moved, I moved to schedule the public hearing for the flood damage. Who's that, Jason? Uh, May 6, 2020. Jason? Yep. yep. Okay, who second? Is, is a second? I'll second. This is Christine. All right, there's a motion and a second that we set up the hearing for uh, whenever they, they suggested uh, on the uh, planning board uh, yes, ordinance maps. Yeah. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I I seem to have it. Motion cares. Go ahead, James. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Item number seven C. This is authorization for these parking signs for veterans. This is for action. Commissioner Mann brought up, and the Board of Commissioners seems supportive of the um, the interest in honoring service veterans by placing uh, veteran parking signs, veteran parking only signs, and town parking. Uh, the recommendation is for the board to authorize a town manager or designee to place veteran parking only or similar signs in the parking area. All right. Uh, do we have a motion on that one? Yes, sir. Yeah, this is Eddie Mann. I'll, I'll move to authorize the town manager or designate a place veteran parking right. only signs or similar signs in parking areas. All right. You've heard the motion by Eddie. Is there a second? This is Richie. I'll second. Uh, All right. Second by Richie. You heard the motion seconded by Richie that we place the parking signs that, uh, for the veterans. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I seem to have it. Motion carries. All right, James. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Next item number eight is for information. This is Mayor and Commissioner's comments. Yeah, I don't have any comments, so I'd like to apologize to the board uh, for this 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 meeting today and the night is <laughs> unknown to me, truthfully, because I've been used to this, as Christine alluded to, and uh, it's a new era for me, and I do apologize. It's been awkward as hell, but we got through it. Okay, I can't <laughs> see, so somebody started off, or whoever wants to start it off for commissioner comments. This is Commissioner Borland, and, uh, you know, on that, I, I know it's been a frustrating meeting, but uh, I do also appreciate, uh, you know, town getting this, uh, get us set up virtually so that we could have this. I think any you know resemblance of uh business as usual is a is a small win right now and i just want to remind those that listen to this later that are that are on now you know we just got to uh um we're not going to see every each other in passing and so it's a lot harder to go out there and run into each other and and get what's on people's minds and so i want to encourage people you know more than than ever to reach out to you know myself and the other elected officials in the town and uh you know we gotta band together and see what we gotta do get through this thing and uh um you know have faith that we'll we'll see the other side of this and uh hopefully we get uh some some piece of summer back at the end of it okay i got my list now christine yes sir i i uh i strongly agree with what jason just said um you know and i i want to thank the town and also the public that you know for listening in it is difficult and we do just have to power through and i uh, just want to thank everybody for you know doing what what they're doing to you know continue with our services and the level that uh that we're accustomed to in the town of manio so you know just please reach out to us you know by phone or email however you know if there's an issue that we can help with um you know i know that we'll probably have a lot to make up for uh when we are back together but uh whatever we can do in the meantime to keep things going and moving forward is what we need to do okay dale well i, I agree with everything that uh, jason and, and uh christine said uh, i'd like to thank the town manager for all his uh diligent work that he's done for the time in these trying times. I do have one question for the uh, uh, for the manager. 
uh, about the, the audit contract. Any update on that? Uh, yes, 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 sir, uh, Commissioner Collins. The the audit contract uh, was was executed, and work is already work is already proceeding. That as staff gathers the things that the auditor um, would would be would be obliged. There's different schedules and things, and the finance department is already already working on that, and the auditor is already on board. So uh, appreciate appreciate the uh, the vote by by the by the board to allow us to press forward with the audit contract. Okay, and the, the company is uh, Thomas Price, Scott Adams. The the audit company. I I believe so. I looked. Thomas. At it. it was our highest rated. We went with the highest rated firm. Yes, I can just. I can oh, okay, uh, so that, well, that was Thomas, Scott Adams, and Adams. Okay, thank you. Okay, Reggie. That's it. I'm good. Thank you. Good, Bobby. I'm good. All right, Eddie. Yeah, I'd like to thank everybody in the town for, uh, in unusual circumstances, keeping business as usual as you can, uh, keeping all services going. And I want to encourage anybody that's listening, um, please reach out to us. Even though it's an awkward time, it's still a time for you to be heard. Uh, so reach out by email, phone, uh, call the town manager, call the commissioners. My number is 423-1215. Call anytime. I'm more than happy to speak with anybody. Thank you. Uh, Betty. I feel the same. Reach out to me. Um, I'm available. I will get. I noticed my number wasn't on my cell number wasn't on the website, but I'll get it. The website looks great. Um, and to the office staff like Kim and Melissa and Shannon and I forget the other lady. They have been wonderful. I went in, dropped by there, and they have been awesome. And to everybody, thank you. And reach out to us. We work for the citizens of Mania. All right, uh, we, James, we're going to recess till when? April the 15th? Yes, sir. April the 15th at 5 o'clock, sir. All right, we don't know yet. You'll prize everybody of what we'll do about the conference calling and, or personal or what have you. I know. You're doing yes, an sir. excellent job. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, to recess April the 15th. Yeah, okay. Motion to, uh, is there a second? <laughs> Second. Second. All right, we've got a second. And motion seconded that we uh, recess to April the 15th. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right, let me just say to everybody, uh, distance yourself and please be safe and be careful. And love mm -hmm. each other. Meet and adjourn. Thank you. Thanks, Bobby. Thank Bye. you. Bye. 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 Bye.